Yeah, British scientists say they've achieved a world first by creating human sperm in a laboratory. The team say its research raises the prospect of new treatments for male infertility. But some medical experts are questioning the breakthrough, while groups opposed to stem cell research say the work is unethical. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, has this report. Scientists in Newcastle believe they've achieved a world first, the creation of human sperm in the laboratory. They were developed from stem cells derived from a donated human embryo. Scientists grew the sperm in a dish for up to six weeks, by which time they say they'd become fully mature and could move. The human sperm created here cannot be used to create life. UK law already prohibits their use in fertility treatment. But the team here in Newcastle say that once the technique is shown to be safe and reliable, it should be permitted to help overcome male infertility. We hope to provide uh, a technique in five to seven years to help infertile men uh, to have uh, the children. Other experts in the field have cast doubt on the breakthrough, arguing that although early sperm cells have been produced, they do not appear to be fully developed while those opposed to the destruction of embryos say the research is unethical. The Newcastle scientists say for the moment their main aim is to advance the understanding of male infertility and why some genetic diseases are passed from one generation to the next. Fergus Walsh, BBC News. I mean, potentially, how much of a breakthrough is this? Well, this would be a huge breakthrough for any man who cannot produce sperm himself. It is his, his only hope of having his own genetic child. Up to now, of course, they've had to rely on donor sperm. However, we don't know for sure that these sperm are capable of fertilising an egg, and that is, after all, the function of a sperm. These may look like sperm, they may wriggle like sperm, but can they do the sperm's job? And we just don't know enough yet about this research to, to conclude that that is what they've done. And in terms of science and the law, the ethics of all this, Gerard mentioned there, there may have to be a change in the law if this kind of research is to be pushed further. Oh yes, because this is, these come from embryonic stem cells, they've, uh, there are all kinds of biological processes that have been involved that would require a change in the law to allow reproduction through these uh, artificial methods, if you like. Um, and, and it's important to remember that uh, th these haven't been shown to be safe, that this team has produced uh, mice through this technique in the, in the past, but these mice did have health problems. They had breathing problems and, and so on, and there have been huge problems with cloning as well. So when you're creating life through these slightly artificial means, you have to be absolutely sure that the offspring uh, are healthy and that there are no other problems before you can actually go anywhere near doing this in humans. So how, how well, the, I wanted to ask you that, Thomas, I mean, how far away are we from some of the lurid headlines we've seen in the, the papers this morning saying, a world without men, you don't need them anymore, we can create sperm. Artificial. Many people would argue that there are many reasons for having men on the planet. Their sperm is just one many of them. Many would argue there's many <laughs> reasons for not having <laughs> There are psychological, there are emotional uh, reasons for, for having uh, uh, men uh, involved in parenthood, uh, raising children, many people would say. Uh, and of course, there are also the factors of the whole uh, the philosophy of, of the human race is based upon um, uh, males and females coming together to have a child. And, and that, for many people, is a fundamental reason for leaving nature as it intended. OK, Thomas, thank you very much indeed for that. Let's get uh, another view, another scientific view on uh, all this with Dr Alan Pacey, a sperm biologist at the University of Sheffield. He joined us uh, live from Manchester. Very good to talk to you, Professor Pacey. Uh, what do you think about this? Is this a breakthrough? Are you convinced that these are viable sperm cells that have been created? If it's true, and if they are sperm, then it is a breakthrough. Um, there's a good logical and scientific reason to want to create sperm artificially because it allows us to study how sperm are formed, it may help us to understand infertility, it may be, help us to develop new drugs that could overcome infertility. I think the prospect of using these sperm themselves in an infertility treatment is a very, very, very long way away and I would very urge caution in our analysis of that. But I have to say, as a scientist who read the paper yesterday when I first saw it, I'm still not convinced 
that what we have here, the cells that have been produced, are bony fide, authentic, whatever you want to call it, sperm. Okay. Um, I've not seen enough detail. I've not seen enough evidence yet. Okay, Dr. Pacey, thank you very much for that. We must cut it short here because we're going to hear an important death. And just on the, you know, the, the kind of headlines in the papers, uh, there's a lot of suggestions around that this is the end of men. I mean... No, I, I don't, I, you know, I mean, this is a treatment that, this is a technique that could be used potentially for treatment, but I think to, to talk about ha having removed men from, from the human race is, is a bit premature. It would be, if we have an alternative, which is, which is uh, intercourse and producing babies the old-fashioned way, then we should jolly well do it. This should be um, preserved just for those rare cases where we might have an infertility problem, if the sperm are genuinely sperm, and if the safety data shows that we could ever use them in treatment. Thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for all those ifs. Dr. Pacey. Okay.